Hello, everybody. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. Over there, we have John Lewandowski. Hey. John has been battling a cold and is, uh, have been taking some medicine. So if uh, we act a little goofy on this show, both of us have been battling our uh, internal illnesses. I have a rib injury and a back injury, also battling a head cold. So um, we all have our own live Wednesday, which is why we were not, have not been live right. planned. We are recording tonight because of the fact that we are not feeling well, so if we have to stop for whatever reason, we can. So for that, we apologize. Yep. We'll also be back tomorrow. We'll probably be live next week sometime, hopefully feeling better, doing something along the lines of a full breakdown of everything that's gone on and we'll talk about a round table type thing. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Something like that. But like I was saying, <laughs> as you can all see, we had, mm -hmm. you know, you can tell we had to pause, obviously, for I hurt my ribs by coughing. Um, yeah. so we have a lot going on, but we'd like to thank our sponsor, Hockey Locker, 2002 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. Oh, so today was the NHL draft. Like most, the NHL draft does have its moments of excitement. And before so, it does. has its moments of blowing up the entire fabric of the NHL. Right. There were seven trades today alone, and I believe there's still one more to be announced. They're currently ironing, ironing out the details and getting the calls through to the league to make sure that it, you know, it's possible. Uh, the league could say right. no, but rarely do they ever say no. Now, before we get into the yeah. draft, let's talk about why Arizona had to forfeit, forfeit their pick. They found that they had tampering with their last pick in the NHL draft in 2019, 2020. When they found that, right. they immediately took their pick away. So for that, they lost their first round pick this, this year. But they got it back by trading with Vancouver. Yeah. And even moved up a couple spots. So I personally think that if the league's going to punish you, you can't trade to be in the first round if you're going to get your first round taken away. I, I just right. don't, yeah. that I, I don't think it should be that way either. You know, I don't think I don't see it as fair, but that's how you how you do things. As projected, the whole time, number one overall was selected by the Buffalo Sabres, Owen Power. Now, they did just trade away Ristolainen. Ristolainen, unhappy there, much like a couple other players there, but unhappy. Nice. Um, with that, they add a guy to go with Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, probably by the end of the college year this year, he'll be signing that entry-level contract. Right. And, uh, be, be a member of the Buffalo Sabres. Um, as far as I can, I can see, it's got a good, he's, you know, good pick. Um, Michigan had a couple guys go, uh, go in the first two selections. Uh, they had um, Matthew Brainer. Um, Matthew Brainer is a kind of a dark horse. Yeah. Kind of came out of nowhere um, last year in college and just took over all of it. Um, yeah. But that that kind of makes it a little interesting of how, how that all um, came about. Yeah. Because, you know, he's a competitive player, but only has one year and he doesn't really stand out as right. a takeover type player in juniors, but then goes to college and becomes a takeover player. Right. There's something amiss here. What happened, you know? Yeah. 
Um, the Anaheim Ducks were next on the clock. They picked Mason McTavish from the Peter, Petersboro Peaks of the Ontario Hockey League. Strong skater, strong, good power forward. Good replacement for um, Ryan Getzlav, who's leaving. Yeah. Great pick. Works well. Could be a good guy to go with Trevor Zegras and, and the young core that they're trying to build around. Right. And another good pick. Oh, the New Jersey Hughes. I cracked this joke because Jack's already there. Well, let's add Luke. Mm -hmm. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> but let's be real here for a second. Luke Hughes is a solid defenseman. He will yeah. add help to that ailing New Jersey Devils team. Right. Um, I, I just think that that's going to be a, a phenomenal thing for them. I hope they get it going together. A guy like him with Ty Smith and his brother, I think there's just the ceiling is high for the Devils going forward. Right. Uh, Columbus. Columbus traded away today. Uh, Seth Jones to the, the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Yep. Then Big signed, news. Signed him to the worst extension I have ever seen. Uh, six years, $9.5 million. He is now signed through 2030. His ex his extension came two years before his contract was up. Makes absolutely no sense to me. But Columbus picks fifth overall Kent Johnson from the University of Michigan. That is three players in the top five never been done before in right. uh, U.S. college history. Well, I add to this, Luke Hughes added to the history of this draft as well. Uh, Quinn, Jack, and Luke are the first three bro first brothers or three brothers to be drafted in the top, top 10 in NHL history. Yeah. Congratulations to the Hughes family. Yes, congratulations. A lot of money. All right. So for Lunda... Um, in the Swedish Hockey League has been doing really well on making NHLers and, I mean, how do I put it? Moritz Sider, Lucas Raymond, Simeon Edvinson over the last three years. All of those players have one thing in common. Right. They were drafted by the Detroit Red Wings. Um, Simeon Evelinson is a very much Roman Yossi style hockey player. Can play physical, but is more of a puck handling defenseman and has high potential, but not really a shutdown guy. Right. Um, that was, I was surprised they picked him there. I really was. Um, then up next, we have the San Jose Sharks, who are rebuilding after a 15-year playoff run. All right, when you have something like that, where Nashville is now, where you've been in the playoffs so many years, so many years, and you've got to rebuild, it is very hard to get back there because yeah, you is. are basically going to start losing guys for nothing. At that point. So they picked up William Eklund, center winger, um, center slash winger. He can play all three positions up front on the forward. Um, he has a top prospect, excels in everything, and yeah. amazing, amazing endurance can play high minutes as a forward, which is very rare. Right. All right. Then we get to the LA Kings. Drew Doughty is their top defenseman. They yep. had Brent Clark. Brent Clark was one of those guys where you weren't sure if he was going to go in the top 10 or the bottom 20. Right. You know, it was really one of those you didn't know, but LA picked him. Um, highly offensive player. 
Um, skating mechanics need some work, but high potential. Right. Uh, Arizona gets their goal scorer, Dylan Gunther. Dylan Gunther was one of those guys where I was like, somebody out of our division, please pick pick him because I don't want to be getting lit up by him. Right. Arizona picked him. They're moving to the central. Um, back to where I said Arizona had to forfeit their pick. I don't like this. But that's not because of a rivalry or anything. If you're tampering, you're tampering. You need to be punished permanently. Right. You're not. They did not. So, yep, there we go. All right. Brian Boucher's kid, Tyler Boucher. Boucher. Not Bobby. But he was picked 10th overall by Ottawa. He has a lot of skill and needs to do a lot of work. He's going to be going to college, but he's got a lot of work to do to get there. I yeah. get this pick horribly. I don't think he's a 10th overall style pick. I just don't. Uh, 11th was uh, forfeited by Arizona, as we said. 12th right. Columbus. Off the trade is with Chicago. Um, they pick up Cole Sillinger. Um, most of you may remember that his dad played for the Predators off of our expansion team. Yeah. Um, he also played for um, the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, as well as being born in Columbus. Um, and his dad also played for the Islanders. So I see this as a good pick if he meets his potential. Yeah. yeah. All right. Calgary Flames. Now, they did just lose Mark Giordano. Picked up uh, Tyler Pitlick uh, from Seattle for a fourth-round pick. Um I think that Matthew Coronado will have a lot of – I think he could be the next Cole Caulfield if he comes out swinging. Right. Um, I think that's a great pick. Buffalo. Buffalo, up to today, only had one pick, but they traded away Ristolainen. Got two firsts, a second, and a defensive prospect. Yeah. They got a haul in that deal. Yeah, they did. And with that pick from Philly, they picked Isaac Rosen. Rosen, 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 where you'll save a fistful of dollars. Only you mm -hmm. Milwaukee people will get that joke. Yeah. All righty. Anyway, overall, he's a, a dual threat offensive weapon. He can pass the puck. He can shoot the puck. Defensively, he needs some work, but that's my most foreign uh, and I'm going to say this, Swedish, Finnish, German, and Russian hockey players are not normally known as their two-way gifted ability. Still a good pick because Buffalo needs all the help they could get. Yeah, they do. Look, I would love nothing more than Buffalo to stop being the punching bag for all NHL jokes. However, in all of that, we had a trade at the 15th pick. Dallas had it. Nobody understood why this happened, but Detroit picked, traded up from the 23 spot, gave up a third for the monstrosity goaltender of the draft, so Sebastian Corsa, 6'6", 210 goaltender. Big, big goalie. And I got to give Steve Eiserman credit here. I don't like giving the Red Wings much credit, but credit where credit is due. You look at how he built Tampa. Right. And he's doing the same thing in Detroit. Yeah. And they are going to be good for a long time. All righty. Then we go on to the Rangers. Um, the Rangers drafted Brendan Ottoman, Ottman, Ottman, from the Flint Firebirds of the Ontario Hockey League, power forward. There's a lot of those in this draft. Um, but 
he has this ability to be a scorer as well, which there's no shortage of that in this draft either. Right. Um, that's where a lot goes in. Now, if you see us take a little less off in our video, understand when it comes to Nashville, we're going to do a deeper dive. That's our job. Right. For other teams, we don't really know what their prospect pool looks like. So for us, we're going off of what we know about the player. Right. So for some of us, we may say it's a good pick. You may disagree. There's going to be some stuff in here we don't like. That's that simple. Much like the St. Louis Blues drafting Zachary Bulduk. Or Bulduk. Either are could be correct. Um, he is a centerman from Ramuski. I had him going 34th in my <sighs> draft. He went 17th. That is a bit of a reach. Don't yeah. Um, I, I just don't think that in this draft where you're thinking of rebuilding, that reaching is your greatest option. Right. You're just starting a rebuild and you're reaching? Eh. All right, the Winnipeg Jets got Lucius on this one. Chaz Lucius from the U.S. National Development Program of the USHL. I think Chaz Lucius could be the steal of the draft, much like uh, Kyle o or uh, Kyle or uh, Connor O'Reilly for Winnipeg. Is it, he's just a gifted scorer who can play a two-way game. We'll see how he rebounds from his injuries. He has had injury problems, but we'll see how he does. Right. Hopefully, Winnipeg can be can be this can be a Lucius deal. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. So leave me be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Nashville. Nashville a bit has kind of confused a lot of us lately. Are we going to be competitors? Are we going to be rebuilders? Do we know what we're doing? The answer to that question is no. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know until probably about trade deadline. You never right. ask St. Louis that question. Because St. Louis at the trade deadline sold off everything, went and won the cup that year. Right, they did. So when you really look at it, <coughs> It all depends on what's going on. <coughs> they pick Fedor Fetchkov. Now, one thing we do know is a very crafty player. Right. He, he has been rising on the boards ever since uh, about midway through the season. He started rising through the boards. I started seeing his name go up. And I started seeing the Preds get better. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe he'll fall to us. Well, he did. Right. And here's the thing. He has a good-sized centerman, something we lack. Yeah. He contributed offensively, both sides of the ice, uh, meaning scoring and passing. So that has the ability to make those around him what better and plays a physical game. Right. All what the Preds are trying to build right now. All right. Minnesota Wild. Well, Minnesota's had their issues. One of the biggest issues for Minnesota has been goaltending. Yeah. Goaltending, goaltending, goaltending. All right. Jasper Wallstad has been one of those guys, even when I look at NHL 21. Jasper Wallstad is in the top goalie ranks as far as being picked. He then trade Minnesota trades with Edmonton to pick him up. They move up. I believe it was two spots to pick this top 10 goalie selection. And I think right. the top 10 of the whole draft falls to 20. This draft has been unpredictable, and you never know. Right. Speaking of unpredictable, um, Boston pick Fabian Lysel of the SHL. He plays for Lewin Hockey Club. 
he was considered a top 10 to top 15 pick prior to scout meeting. There is an issue of him being coachable. Okay. Which is why I'm glad Nashville passed on him. He has an amazing quick handling, puck ability, uh, yeah. creativity with the puck, quick hands, and impressive speed, but refuses to be a two way player. We do. Right. We have experience with that with Kevin Fiala. He does. He would just not fit our style of game. You failed your team to do so. Yep. So we'll see how that works out in Boston. All righty. So then we have the Edmonton Oilers. The Edmonton Oilers select Xavier Xavier Bourgon. Dynamic center, extremely intelligent, but. He's more of a playmaker, lacks ability up the middle, lacks ability to play center at times, could be third line center. Let's just be real here. This is a stretch pick. If you're lacking the ability to play center and you're a centerman, why are you there? All righty, we get to Dallas. Dallas was a wish, uh, a stretch pick as well. Why Johnston? Yes, that is, he did play for the under, did not play this season outside of the under 18s due to injury. So this is a risky pick at 23 for Dallas. If he had injuries and you're not sure of what's going on there, it may be a little risky. Right. All right, so now we're on to 24. 24 being the Florida Panthers pick Mackie Samiskovich. All right, with him, they won a Clark Cup. He has amazing passing ability and scoring ability. The problem with that is, is he good because of his ability? Or is he good because of Matthew Coronado, who was also on the same team with him, who got picked higher? It is. It is a. It, it's really hard when you pick line mates, and 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 you're going into the same draft. Right. Because you don't know if this guy was good or if he was good because of that. It, it, it was it was really weird. We'll see how this goes. All righty. Next up, we got the Columbus Blue Jackets picking Corson Kruleman. Defenseman, Brooks Bandit. AJHL out of Canada. However, because of his offensive zone yet uh, abilities, he's a great skater, but, you know, that whole spiel lacks physical presence. Right. For something I've been saying about the defensemen over the last six years in the NHL, they lack defensive prowess. Right. He is committed and heading to the University of Wisconsin. So good luck here in Wisconsin in the land of the Badgers. Um, then up we have Minnesota, where they got this pick from the Pittsburgh Penguins. They picked Harston Lambos, defenseman. Uh, defensive defenseman. He has uh, uh, a good offensive side. Good defensive side. Um, injuries are his question. He has okay. a long history of knee issues. So we'll see where that leads them. Now where we all get confused. Nashville, pick 27. All right. Well, I was about to get ready to do a show. I was on the phone with a buddy of mine, and he goes, Nashville just made a trade. 
I go, huh? Two seconds later, my TV announces it. All righty. Nashville selects trading their two second round pick, Zachary LaRue, from the Halifax Mooseheads Heads in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Yep. Yeah. Similarity play style. Brad Marchand, Matthew Kachuk. Yep. He struggles with consistency on the ice with his discipline. I think that can be fixed. He has high skill ability to, if you put a puck in the corner, he's going to go out, go over there, battle for it, and come out the, out the other side with it. Right. He has a fearlessness and a, an, an amazing ability to get to the net. That's something Nashville's lacked for a really long time. Right. Yeah. That's Mike Fisher. All righty. So up next, we have the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche have a strong prospect back pool on the back end defensively. However, offensively, they are in a big question mark of are you going to be able to keep Landis Cobb? Are you going to be able to keep McKinnon? Are you going to be able to convince Ranton to stay if those two leave? Right. So those are the questions that they have. You pick up a guy like Oscar Olison, who plays the exact same side and position that Ranton plays. Right. You, you're basically telling everyone that in two years you're rebuilding. When both everybody leaves, right? Um, that's just what I see here. All right, so now we got the 29th pick. We have the New Jersey Devils. They pick Chase Stillman for the Sudbury Wolves center. Mm. That is a horrid pick. A horrid pick. He is going to play over in the Danish Hockey League. He's not even coming back to the OHL and said that there's a chance he may never come to back to America. It is a really risky pick there. Right. All righty. So then we get to the Vegas Golden Knights who picked Zach Dean from the Gatineau Olympic of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Good. Center, same thing as every other center I've talked about, two-way hockey player. Nice. The forwards are now becoming two-way hockey players and the defensemen are becoming offensive players. It is confusing. But good pick for Vegas. It is a good pick. <coughs> Montreal. Yeah. We're at Montreal. Montreal picks Logan Malo, defenseman, London Knight, Ontario Hockey League. Was a was recently charged in Sweden for taking dis, taking and distributing offensive photo without the consent of another party. He publicly withdrew from the NHL draft on Tuesday. Yep. The severity of his charges. This is an unexpected pick that should not have occurred. No. This is according to Sportsnet, ESPN, us. We're like, yep. we're trying to get away from this. Right. right. Montreal also has. Martin Bergeron is their GM, who is also being investigated on the on the Blackhawks thing. Way to go! You're not helping your pitch. This no. is bad. It is bad, and I refuse to take any more further part in it. Speaking of bad, the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, they trade away a young defenseman. 
give up everything they had for Seth Jones and pick a defenseman named Nolan Allen, who was set to be drafted 78th by ESPN overall. Yeah, man. By he wasn't even in the top 100 by Elite Prospect. No, he wasn't. And you're picking him 32nd? It's it's a big question mark here. Yeah. There's been a lot going on, and we have a lot of question marks. My phone is going absolutely ballistic. And what was all that said? That has been your first round coverage of the 2021 NHL draft for us at From Milwaukee to Nashville for Daniel Gunnar and John Lewandowski. We will see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we will be doing a show tomorrow, uh, probably regarding a little bit about the NHL and AHL schedules, um, kind of giving our, our kind of thoughts, and we will be going forward after that uh, with the draft. So see you guys tomorrow. Uh, time pending, depending on what happens around here. <laughs> right, hopefully I'll be feeling better you'll be feeling better and hopefully we can get back live tomorrow hopefully yep so we will see you all later